Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Martin and this is Fox 26 Crime Files. First, a CPS employee is out of a job after being caught on camera telling a teenager to become a prostitute. In this Fox 26 exclusive, right, our Randy Wallace speaks with the mother. Don't be a home, be a real home. Wouldn't they remove a child from a parent that told their child to be a prostitute? They should. And they would. Keisha Basley has nine kids. She turned to Child Protective Services to help her with her 14 year old daughter, who she says was running away and causing trouble at school. My daughter told me that the worker had been telling her that she should do these things. So she said she decided to video her. You hear something, please? CPS is housing the girl at a hotel. She's one of dozens in Harris County. In the video, she tells the CPS employee she wants food. The CPS worker tells her to be a prostitute. I mean, she was basically encouraging a 14-year-old girl to become a prostitute. And giving her an incentive to do so and almost a threat uh, of not having her needs being met if she didn't do what this woman very explicitly told her to do. If I, me, the parent, was to do something like this to my child, I would be bashed, I would be called a horrible parent, I would lose my kids. Get your tail to that room. Basley filed a formal complaint with CPS. This should not happen to girls in their care. This should not happen. This is unacceptable. Jamie Masters, the commissioner of CPS, came to Houston to personally apologize to Basley and her daughter. I've never seen that happen before, where a commissioner of CPS comes in from Austin uh, just to apologize about something that's horrible that's been done to a child and a parent involved with CPS. I do not believe that that was genuine. I really don't. It's bad enough if it's one rogue caseworker. It concerns me that it may be bigger than that. And, and they need to investigate this and make sure that it's not just one person. And they've got to figure out a way to protect these kids. Randy Wallace, Fox 26 News. All right, now this story that has a lot of people talking this week. A celebratory day turned terrifying for a Houston woman. She says she was poisoned after touching a napkin. Her story has gone viral, and she wants to raise awareness about what happened. She spoke with our Sherman DeSalle. Physically, I'm okay, but emotionally, I mean, mentally, I'm not. Like, I don't even want to go anywhere by myself. Erin Mims was celebrating her birthday with her husband at a restaurant Tuesday. They were headed to a spa when she noticed a napkin wedged in the passenger door handle of her car. This isn't the actual napkin, but I just wanted to give y'all an idea of how it was sticking out the door handle. I didn't think none of it. I just took it and, and threw it out, but then I opened the door with the tips of my fingers. Um, and I got in and I asked him, did you put a, a napkin in the door? And he was like, no. She decided to go back into the restaurant and wash her hands. After leaving, she said she knew something was wrong. And maybe like five minutes, my whole arm started tingling and started feeling numb. And then I couldn't breathe. I started getting high flashes. My chest was hurting. My, I started, my heart was beating really fast. They drove to the nearest hospital where doctors ran urine samples, blood tests, and CAT scans. Doctor came in and he told me, you know, um, it wasn't enough in my system to determine what it was, but it was acute poisoning from, you know, an un unknown substance. Her doctors told her it sounded like a failed kidnap attempt. Without knowing the details of her toxicology report, local poison control expert Mark Winter says her symptoms match hundreds of different poisons, even though the exposure was minimal. When it comes to the human body, I've learned over my 40 years, anything is possible when it comes to the human body. The, the probability is, is that you would have to have a lot more than just, a, I'm gonna call it casual uh, exposure. What happened to her is still unknown, but her story has reached millions online. She's hoping she can save someone else from having a terrifying moment. Who's just on a night out. People have been, been coming and saying it, they've been seeing it. So just, I just want everybody to be careful. Now this, a horrible senseless crime, a dog shot and killed near the Heights. It happened earlier this week behind a church on Link Road in the North Loop, and it was in the middle of the afternoon. A witness told police a man got out of his vehicle with a gray mixed breed Labrador, shot the dog and then just took off. Deputies say two vehicles were involved. The suspect's vehicle is a late model white Chevy truck with an extended cab. The second is a newer model black Cadillac SUV. 
Houston authorities are now working to identify the victim. In fact, the last victim of a serial killer from 50 years ago. The candy man, as he's called, raped and tortured at least 28 teenage boys between 1970 and 1973. And one of those victims is still only known as John Houston. John Houston Doe, in fact. As Fox 26's Gabby Hart reports, the National Center for the Missing and Exploited Children says their mission now is to give this victim his name back. Somebody out there does know who this child is. Somebody does remember him. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, also known as NCMEC, has been working in conjunction with the Harris County Institute of Forensic Sciences to help identify John Houston Doe. Doe is the last unknown victim of Dean Arnold Coral, a serial killer who became known as the Candyman. With the help of two accomplices, Coral Lord, tortured and murdered 28 young males in the Houston area. Carol Schweitzer with the Forensic Services Unit for Nick Mick says a few years ago, their agency assisted in exhuming the remains of John Houston Doe in order to use new technology and forensics in the hope of finally identifying him. New technology, new forensics onto this case that weren't available when he was first found. Authorities found his skeletal remains in Houston on August 9th of 1973. Experts say he may have been dead for 12 months before being discovered. It's that new modern day technology that made this sketch and clay composite showing what the victim may have looked like possible. Returning the name to this victim absolutely matters. Examiners found that the victim was possibly white and Hispanic with brown hair. He may have suffered from spina bifida, which could have affected the way he walked. But it's also possible that he had no noticeable symptoms. He was found wearing multicolored striped swimming trunks and a long sleeve khaki colored t-shirt. How can we get more public engagement, more eyes on the facial reconstruction to help develop those leads. Schweitzer says no matter how much time has passed, with the help of the public, there's still a chance of identifying this victim, and she's seen it done before. Friends, possibly siblings, cousins that are still alive, that still remember him, a robbery suspect was caught here on camera getting angry with a convenience store clerk. This happened last month on Alder Drive near the Southwest Freeway. Police say the man really got angry when the clerk refused to give him change because he had brought in a fake bill just the day before. Police say he threatened to send gang members to hurt her if she did not cooperate. You see, the man was insistent he got away with money there from the register. Only on Fox, a Houston woman was viciously, viciously attacked while visiting Sri Lanka. An international manhunt is now underway where the suspected attacker named in an arrest warrant. Now, police also tell us he is a social media influencer. Fox 26's Randy Wallace with this exclusive. I've always loved going on uh, solo trips and just seeing different countries and exploring different cultures. Jordan Thornton says she was having a great time in Sri Lanka until she and a friend went to a club called the Cheeky Monkey. When this man approached us um, and he demanded that we move and that we needed to leave and then verbally started harassing us. Thornton says she would later learn that man is Nikolaj Ambi Ibsen, a social media influencer from Denmark. I looked up and I saw Nikolaj holding a glass and he like winded his arm back and threw it like it was a baseball while he was standing right over me and I was seated in a corner. Thornton says Ibsen's girlfriend pushed her cell phone out of her hand, then seconds later you can hear the glass shattering. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I was in shock, really. I just, I knew I needed to get like the glass out of my mouth, um, so I just started spitting the glass out and trying to like get away from the whole situation. My lip was basically hanging off my face in three different areas. And that's when I began to really panic. So I had to go to three different hospitals over the span of seven hours. The second the doctor saw me and I pulled the bag of ice away from my face, she screamed and just told me, no, no, we can't help you. We can't help you. You need to go to a different hospital. I wanna make sure that no one else is gonna go through what I went through. Um, because of how violent this was and because he ran away and left the country immediately and is denying any responsibility, I think that it just proves that he poses a threat to other people. 
We have some video of the officer involved shooting that took place late last month in Missouri City. An officer was shot in the face by a robbery suspect and he was later shot by police. Fox 26's Sherman DeSalle is breaking down the video. Here. Caught on body camera, the moment when officers shoot and apprehend a robbery suspect in Missouri City. Police say Missouri City officer Crystal Sepulveda had just been shot by 19 year old Jeffrey Bundrent Jr. You can hear her partner helping fellow officers find where Bundrant is located. Okay. Let me leave. That's my partner. Let me leave. I'm with Houston police say two of their own approached the backyard of a home nearby and a shot was fired by the suspect first. Bundrant was rendered aid and sent to the hospital, but died from his injuries. Missouri City Chief Mike Barrison is thankful for the support they received that night. Department of Public Safety and Fort Bend Sheriff's deputies assisted in the incident. Both on and off duty, and we uh, genuinely care about each other. I'm sure we fuss like every other family from time to time, but certainly times of challenges brings us all together and certainly builds the, the bonds that we already had. As for Officer Sepulveda, she's recovering after being shot in the face. The road will be long, but she's glad to be with family after fearlessly serving her city. We're praying that she'll have a full recovery, but uh, time will tell if that's, her, that's going to happen or not. Her, her spirits remain high. She's just happy to be home with her, her son and try to get his return to normalcy as much as possible. We also spoke to some local business owners in that community who say that they did what they could earlier this month to raise funds for the injured officer, Crystal Sepulveda. They say that it's the least that they could do after seeing the type of service that those officers give to their city. Sherman DeSell, Fox 26 News. A teen free on bond is accused of ditching his ankle monitor, then taking part in the murder of a 22 year old man. He is one of more than 180 people allegedly killed by someone free from jail on multiple bonds. Fox 26's Randy Wallace spoke with the victim's mother for his breaking bond series. It's very painful. He was one of a kind. Ebony Harris is talking about her oldest out of seven children, 22 year old Zatarian Franklin, an aspiring rap artist. This is like my worst nightmare some days. I don't sleep, I don't eat. Just knowing that he's not gonna walk through the door and I'm never gonna see him again. 22 year old Quantavius Duncan, 24 year old Jacory Hall, and 18 year old Anthony Bevel are all charged in Franklin's murder. 176th Criminal District Court Judge Nikita Harmon set Bevel's bond for aggravated robbery and aggravated assault at $40,000. He got out on a 5% bond, and that was in March of 2022. This was like two months before Harris County passed a new ordinance mandating that it would have been, you had to have 10%. According to court documents, Bevel was ordered to wear an ankle monitor. Uh, he failed that miserably. They kept trying to contact him. They didn't respond. The battery was dead, and finally he just took it off, chunked it, destroyed it. When community supervision tried to find Bevel, his mother told them he was gone. So mom actually returned the ankle monitor that her son had tampered with and removed back to the agency. On June 14th, Bevel and his accomplices allegedly killed Franklin during a robbery at 400 Greens Road. I walked around to his apartment and the police was like, no, get back. And I seen my son laying on the ground. According to reports, they were trying to rob people to raise money to bond another one of their colleagues out. I think that's crazy. It's crazy. Anthony Bevel is now a wanted fugitive. But the bigger question is how many other Anthony Bevels are out there, and we do not know, and we should know. In Houston, they, they're able to get a bond on murder. It don't matter that they out here taking people's lives. They have bonds. They can get out. If their family want to get them out, they can get them out. I'll never get to see my son. His mama lucky. And that is this week's Fox 26 Crime Files.